I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I'm a coronavirus researcher. And uh, yeah, I guess it's time to talk about what's going on with Omicron. Um, so when we talked before, I said we didn't know much, and that was definitely the case. Now we know a little bit more. Uh, so let's look. Um, first of all, a thing that people are asking about, what about reinfections? Um, and so first we can say in general, and then we can start to say for Omicron. So in general, this is a good paper right over here. Um, and so uh, this one, if we go up, uh, so this is just showing that uh, in uh, 1300 reinfections, they only had four severe ones. Whereas for the same matched uh, age group, they had considerably more, uh, 158 uh, previously. So that suggests that uh, in general, uh, at least with the old strains, an infection worked kind of like a vaccination in limiting the amount of severe disease after that. Um, here is the actual paper uh, and the DOI, which can take you there. All right. But now it's Omicron world. So what is Omicron? All right, we've learned a little bit. And so this is, I think, the best paper uh, about it. And it's got Linda Safe on there. And Linda Safe knows what she's doing. All right, so scroll down. And I think figure three is the best one. Yep, let's zoom into that. OK, so with a coronavirus spike, uh, one of the problems that the virus has is that sometimes the spike will fall apart. Uh, think of it as a little kernel of popcorn that's just waiting to pop and sometimes gets a little too excited and goes off before it should. That's kind of the deal. So when that happens, that means the virus can't infect. So this is a thing that's generally bad for the virus if it is having to go through the air, for example and work its way down to the lungs, you know, like swim around in the mucus. It's not actually moving. It's just getting pulled back and forth passively by the air um, until it hits the right cell. So in that case, stability could be a benefit to the virus, but could be is not the same as is with this virus. And yeah, uh, a lot of people have uh, put that cart before the horse uh, already. Um, but in this case, we've already seen one early mutant called D614G, and that was a stability mutant. It stopped the spike from falling apart. And what we saw then was that within about oh, two months, I think, of the first uh, case being detected, it had spread everywhere and completely taken over, and everything that did not have that uh, mutation in it either picked up the mutation or was dead. Yeah. <laughs> And so it has been a D614G world since then, the idea being that it's more stable and so you can tinker around with it. It can, you know, it has more places it can explore um, with its evolution that it couldn't get to before because it would just fall apart. And uh, yeah, a, fa a fallen apart spike is not a very effective spike. So what does the new virus do? Well, the new virus is pretty darn stable, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, actually, is this the right uh, one? Uh, yep, this is the right one, yeah. So what we're looking at here is there are two parts of the spike. There's a top part called S1 and a bottom part called S2. And the S1 part is there to bind to the receptor and then it goes away and S2 does some fancy things and that's what actually puts a hole in the cell, opens it up and our little virus genome can go inside. And so what we're looking for here, uh, if a virus becomes more stable, what they're doing in this test is they're just taking some of this virus with the spike and they're just letting it sit there. And they're saying, okay, how much loose S1 can we find on the floor? You know, it's like asking if kids are in the house by uh, how many toys are on the floor, or whatever, how many Legos are in the carpet. And so look at all these things. So this is like an average one. This is our D614G, which is very stable compared to everything that came before it. So. Imagine that what came before will be a big fat black band, which means just a lot of spike that fell apart and showed up on the gel. Because the only way you get on this gel is if you have fallen apart all by yourself. And so you look over here and look how big and fat that one for Delta is. Delta falls apart pretty easily. Now it's got other things about it that make it grow really well, but the spike is pretty unstable. And probably that is one of the things that was holding Delta back. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine Delta being held back? And yet, here we are. Look at Omicron over here. You see that little band that's almost not there? 
that's Omicron not shedding any S1 <laughs> uh, into the medium. That means the Omicron spike is stable. Like how stable? Well, it makes D614G look like, uh, I don't know, uh, HU1, which was the original thing, which was just terrible, fell apart all the time. <laughs> so there you go, yeah. <laughs> um, Omicron appears to be a stability mutant not in the sense that it's going to sit on your hands and you got to wash your hands or that it's going to sit on the table and leap back up into your nose. There's no evidence that that has ever happened so far in the pandemic. Um, uh, yeah, it would be hard to figure out if that can happen. And honestly, the virus passes so well uh, from person to person, uh, right from nose to nose, that uh, it doesn't really need to. Um, yeah, anyway. So it's a stability mutant in the sense that once you breathe in a bit of that beautiful Omicron air, the virus is going to sit there in your lungs for a while. And whereas Delta, all the little kernels of Delta would pop like popcorn and be useless after a certain amount of time, Omicron is just going to sit there and it's just going to wait. And it's going to wait until it finds just the right cell. I mean, yeah, admirable in a way, right? Isn't that what we all want? <laughs> So that's, uh, yeah, that's the Omicron story. And so that's why it's a problem and that's what it's doing. Um, uh, this paper, which is still my favorite one on the molecular biology of Omicron, um, shows that the virus is maybe not quite as good at entering cells, but if it can just sit there and basically get, I don't know, said like 10 times as many uh, chances to enter, you know, uh, looking at the relative stability, then uh, yeah, it's going to find a way, <laughs> essentially. So that would mean that potentially you would need to inhale less virus to catch an infection. And this is just logic rather than uh, an actual paper I can point to. But if the virus doesn't fall apart and falling apart is what limited the virus from infecting people, then this virus has solved that problem, at least until the next stability mutant comes around. Uh, yeah, Whew, rough. All right, um, now the thing that people want to know uh, is over here. There we go. On my third tab. Ah, oh, so that was the third tab that gets you. Um, this is from the UK. Here we go. And from the MRC. Um, and uh, yeah, out of Imperial College London. And what it's looking at is reinfection and specifically severity of Omicron. Um, in uh, both reinfection and in... Actually, it, this one's more about infection in general. Um, yeah, this is not the reinfection study. Um, there, there is a CDC reinfection study that gets a lot of people citing it, and it has six people in it. And so <laughs> that is what we would call not a representative sample uh, in the old, uh, yeah, precision and scientific whatever community. <laughs> um, yeah, so Omicron in England. The big conclusion of this thing, and uh, you're welcome to go and look it up, um, there's the link up at the top, um, is that there is no evidence uh, from the first, they've got a couple hundred thousand people in the entire study, but I believe only about 1,800 of those are actually confirmed Omicron. Uh, and 120,000 are confirmed Delta. And I don't, I don't remember what the rest are, if they just didn't get a good sequence or what. But there's no evidence from this study, which is the biggest one we have so far, that you're any less likely to go to the hospital with Omicron than with any other variant. Now, it doesn't mean that if you're vaccinated, you're going to go to the hospital, definitely. No, it just means that Omicron is, first and foremost, uh, a COVID virus, much as I hate to say that. Uh, yeah, it is a SARS-CoV-2, and it does all the COVID things. And it doesn't particularly do them more or less than any other variant. Once you have done a good job, which is what they did, and controlled for people's age, um, people's pre-existing conditions, stuff like that. Um, and so that's the kind of heavy lifting math that, uh, yeah, amateur sleuths like you, me, and uh, <laughs> whoever is on the internet saying weird things right now. These are things that are hard to do without a giant, really good data set. And so this is kind of what we were waiting for. So the things we don't know right now are, is Omicron reinfection, how does that compare to um, reinfection with something else? 
And we have that old data showing that reinfection, which I think was mostly with beta in that uh, particular paper, um, is less likely to kill you. But beta in general maybe is, yeah, it's pretty similar to the versions that the person would have caught before. And so you would get a lot more overlap between the immunity to both of them. Um, Omicron's kind of a different beast. It's uh, kind of like hitting the reset button. Some of the immunity is going to carry over. Uh, the spike in general is 97% identical. So some of those what we call T-cell epitopes, like stuff that makes you not get sick in general, uh, are, are still going to work. They're still going to be there um, and reasonably functional. Uh, it's just that a lot of the antibodies that land on a particular site that is really good at preventing the infection before it starts, that site has changed so much that almost all of those antibodies don't work which also means that the antibody therapy, which was never all that infective, uh, effective, um, that uh, is basically being stopped everywhere because it doesn't work against Omicron and uh, Omicron is uh, coming. So yeah, yeah. Omicron is mostly just, just think of it as, um, just think of it as COVID, a uh, virus that causes COVID. There's nothing really different about it, except that it's different enough that your immune system will have a hard time keeping it out. Um, vaccination should, should still go a long way toward protecting uh, a person if Omicron is the one that gets through. And um, yeah, there's still a lot of Delta out there. Uh, I think we're approaching the point where it's getting to be about 50-50 in uh, Europe and in the US anyway. Uh, in terms of Omicron versus Delta. And we got there fast. Yeah, <laughs> I would uh, predict in another month, uh, Delta is going to be pretty rare. And uh, I just don't see how it can change from the position where it's in to outcompete Omicron. So Omicron, not spectacular, but it hangs around and it does the job. Omicron is the tortoise. Delta was the hare, and you know who won that race, right? <laughs> so do I. Just uh, don't expect it to go slow on you know you or your immune system, and don't don't sleep on Omicron. Don't listen to these people if they're telling you that it's milder or somehow it is adapted to live with us. Because remember, adaptation probably has to go both ways. You will probably see a negative selection of people who are susceptible at the same time as you see a selection against viruses that kill lots of people. And the two are going to have to change and sort of come together. And there's no way to drive evolution like that without a whole lot of death. So, yeah. So let's not. <laughs> let's just not. Um, but it does look as though, um, yeah, like we said in the last uh, one, Vaccination is pretty effective still. It'll be better when they get the specific um, boosters uh, for Omicron and Omicron-like viruses, and I really want to get one of those. Um, but for now, yeah, just having a uh, third shot or a fourth shot if you can get it, pretty good idea in terms of what appears to be uh, protective. You just want as high a level of neutralizing antibody as possible, and that appears to give you the greatest chance of um, avoiding reinfection. And the first paper that we showed back there showed that when people do get reinfected, those 1,300 people in that first study, they got reinfected and they had virtually no antibodies. They still had some of the other parts of the immune system which were ready to fight the virus after it got there and caused a problem, but um, yeah, no, uh, uh, no front line to stop the virus from getting in. So there we go. That's Omicron. Yeah, not necessarily scarier, but definitely not less scary. And the thing that worries me is that people are treating it as if it is, uh, yeah, a cause to celebrate. And uh, <laughs> that's that's a real bad idea. It's still five people in the U.S. Uh, so if you take everybody who's in hospital, five of them are unvaccinated for every one that's vaccinated. And we're over 50% vaccinated. So that's just, this is beating up on people who are still somehow a year after virtually everybody could get a vaccine. They still haven't even got one. Those are the people this is absolutely dominating. And uh, yeah, don't like to see that. That's not any good, right? 
So there you go. Um, I think for next time, I'm going to get my ring lamp working so you can actually see me. But uh, <laughs> until then, I hope this was helpful and uh, got you caught up on Omicron. Uh, yeah, it's bad. All right.